How many Christians say in Jesus' name and nothing happens? Right. Either the Bible is wrong mm. or you have misunderstood the scripture. Right. And the truth is you have misunderstood the scripture because yeah. the Bible is never wrong. Right. When you speak in tongues, do you say in the name of Jesus, then you start speaking in tongues? Mm. Because it says, in my name they shall speak in new tongues. Do you say, in the mighty name of Jesus, Rabba Shadababa. <laughs> it doesn't come to you like that. The word, in my name, the word name there means anoma. Mm. Anoma doesn't mean in the name of. Anoma means in the manner and the character of. Right. Meaning, in the same way Jesus would do it, I am doing it. Mm. It's not saying, at the mention of my name, they will cast out demons. Mm. It says, in my name. Yeah. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. I hope you are all uh, blessed no matter where you are. And I believe that um, God will do us some good today. And I believe that it will be such an amazing, amazing evening. And I know that um, uh, God will move with us in a special way. I know it's super late, but um, uh, I am still excited for what God is going to do. So I pray that um, you are ready, you are prepared, no matter where you are. And uh, it will be a good night and it will be an amazing night to understand some things in the spirit that uh, will elevate us to where we need to be. I know I didn't announce it online. I didn't post any flyer tonight, but nevertheless, I love being spontaneous sometimes, and uh, I believe it will be a blessing. And I'm joined with my brother, Mr. AJ. How you doing? Yeah, yeah you know? Yeah. You're such a PK, man. I'm sorry. He has all the proper church etiquette better than I, better than I do. But... Uh, is a great man of God, and it will be a good, it will be a good discussion, and I believe it will help you. We're going to learn some things, and we're going to grow. So I want you to share this. Let somebody know that we are alive, and Jesus will be glorified. Um, it will be phenomenal because of what I'm going to cover. Remember, tomorrow is uh, the angelic realm, realm of angels. It will be amazing. It will be. Um, if you haven't registered, register. I might sponsor some people. Right. It's just for this kind of stuff, it's too sensitive that I feel like people who take these things easily, it doesn't cost them are the same people that usually mis misuse or, or taint things to be what they are not. You know, because it doesn't cost anything. You know what I mean? So it's easy to say whatever. I have millions, I'm not millions, but thousands of teachings on my page. This has nothing to do with salvation. It simply has to do with spiritual growth. It has nothing to do with salvation, but it has the, the grace and the ability to build you up in the areas of the spirit that you need to navigate and to move with God. So that is the power of what we are going to cover um, we're going to cover to, uh, uh, tomorrow. So I pray that uh, those who will be there, uh, prepare yourself, empty yourself, and the Lord Jesus will fill you. So I'm joined with uh, Pastor AJ. It's going to be a good evening. Uh, it's going to be nice. It's going to be powerful. And I'm going to be speaking, and this is a discussion I was having with him, uh, I think maybe yesterday, but I think it will be a blessing to you. Uh, the experience of God with man the experience of God with man, how to experience God, and how do we know we have experienced God? How do we know that we are experiencing God? Uh, this is something that um, the modern church has diluted because of the misunderstanding of spiritual things. First of all, forgetting that God is spirit. Right. And because God is spirit, you don't experience him in the flesh. So if your pursuit of this God is simply in the flesh, you're going to miss him. If your pursuit of this God is based on emotions, you're going to miss him. Right. Uh, God can be experienced through your emotions. God can be experienced also physically, but that is not where you find God. There is something that has to happen for you to see this experience physically where other people can also participate in what you have uh, received of God. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. 
Anyone can say, God said to me, God did this for me, God did that for me, God will do this for me, God will do that. But the evidence of you having experienced God can only be validated by others partaking of what you have. Jesus said that I have come from above. We saw that truly he has come from above because he revealed the Father to us, not just in word. But we saw him raising the dead. We saw him healing the sick. We saw the wisdom, the revelation wisdom that can only be received if you have been with God. So the evidence of him being with God was just beyond words. So there are many who want you to believe God simply because of what they have said. Mm -hmm. But that has never been the way of God. Because anyone can say good things. The Pharisees sat at the, uh, uh, Jesus said they sat at the seat of Moses. And they spoke and gave people burdens. But the experience of them being with God was never there. You couldn't validate their experience with God. It was just, this is right to do, that is wrong to do, this is right to do, that is wrong to do. And, and also the biggest mistake we have also uh, uh, um, managed to accomplish, if I should say so, is that we have also used morality, our morality, to signify that we are with God. And that is just not true. There are moral people in the world. It doesn't mean they are with God. So just because I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do this, does not mean that I am close to God. Because God doesn't need me to be good for him to be close to me. Mm. God is close to me because he is good, not because I am good. Because any good that I will ever do is filthy rags unto him. So God doesn't require my good even though he will make me good. Mm. That's good. So how do we get to a place whereby we have a tangible experience with God? Not an experience that is in words, but an experience that is indeed with God, that others can participate in that experience so that many can come to Christ. Let me give you a a, a different example. Even our concept, if I should say, our concept of of being with God, Mm -hmm. it is based on chance, Mm -hmm. not on facts, Mm -hmm. not on truth. An example is, I've seen men of God say this all the time. They will say, uh, 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 if you're having a miracle service, they will say, how can you say you're having a miracle service? What if God doesn't want to heal people? Wow. How can you say you're going to have a miracle service? What if that is not the way the Holy Spirit wants to move? Right. How can you say you're going to have a deliverance service? What if God just wants people to receive the word? Now, the reason why they can reason like that is because they have never walked with God. God has used them. But they have never walked with God. And when God used them, they were not prepared. God just used them as a vessel to express himself. And he left and they can never redo the same experience they had with God. So their whole experience with God is by chance. When the Holy Spirit feels like it, which is not wrong, but we see even the progression of the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 4. It says, Jesus, after he left the Jordan, he was led into the wilderness to be tested and to be, to be tempted of God, uh, to be tempted of the devil, sorry. Satan was waiting for him in the wilderness. He was led by the Holy Spirit to go and be tempted. But after the temptation, you don't read anywhere Jesus being led by the Holy Spirit again. The Bible says Jesus left the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. So a Christian who is still in the realm of being led, you have still not matured. (laughs) This is why the Bible says it this way. It says, those who are led by the Spirit are what? The sons. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are still growing. You have not matured yet. Right. Is this making sense? Yeah. 
Can we pray for God to give us, tell us we should go left and right? Yes, that, doesn't, that is not what I'm covering here. Yes, you should pray and ask God for direction. But there is a place you get to that you act with God. Right. That God can reason with you. Right. Not because he needs your opinion, but you have matured enough that God will not even do anything without sitting with you and say, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. What do you think? Mm. Yeah. That is the place of spiritual maturity. That we as believers, we need to get to not a place that is shallow, but a place of great maturity yeah. with God. Mm. That we are no longer just being led without knowing what is happening. Mm. But we are working with God, yeah. moving with God. And I will give you three stages of this, what it looks like. Amen. I don't know if people are ready, That's if good. this is yeah, making yeah. sense. Now, I'll give you three stages of this, and I will, I will show it to you. The first stage of every believer is to be led. I love that. Because you don't know the way. Right. You don't know the truth. And it is the Holy Spirit that will lead you in all truth. It is the Holy Spirit that will teach you. So when you are still in the classroom, you are being led. Mm. God has not yet permitted you to go out. Right. You have still not received baptism of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has just manifested in you through salvation. Mm he has given you the capacity and the power to become a son and a daughter of God. But you have not yet matured to be sent out. Man. This is the realm of being led. This is where you need a witness of the Holy Spirit to confirm you are a child of God. Meaning your own witness is not sufficient. Right. You still have errors. You still have mistakes. So you need the Holy Spirit to bear witness with you and say, no matter what you are going through right now. Mm -hmm. You're still maturing. Right. You're still God's child. Yeah. Your mistake doesn't make you disqualified. Mm. So you need the Holy Spirit to confirm to you mm. that you're a child of God. You still don't know. It's not a knowing. Right. Is, is this making sense? Yeah. That's like it is still not a knowing, if I should say. It is still not a knowing. Mm. It is still not a knowing. Yeah. You are still not in the realm of knowing. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm talking to myself. It's funny you say that because I'm thinking of David and Samuel right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where Samuel is looking and before he's even about to pour the oil, mm -hmm. God has to correct him and say, no, it's, it's man who looks on the outer appearance, but mm -hmm. it's me who is looking at the heart. And David didn't even know he was in the position of being the king. No. Until Samuel confirmed that for him. So you see, he didn't even know that God had pointed him out, and you've said that perfectly. So you need to comprehend that this thing is in stages. That is why it is such a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Such a huge mistake. When somebody is still in the infancy of the spirit to think you can correct elders. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> when somebody is in the infancy of the spirit, when you're an infant, when you're an infant of the spirit, it is not wrong. We all go through that stage. Mm -hmm. This is why you find on Thursday, was it on Sunday? On Sunday, I was praying and I corrected some, the twins. Mm -hmm. And I told them, no, 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 no. God doesn't speak like that. Yeah. The devil took advantage of you. Mm -hmm. You gave up your, your house and you two are now homeless, living hotel to hotel, all because just something told me to leave my house. That's not how God speaks. Mm -hmm. You're still in your infancy. If I ask you, why did he tell you to do that? You can't tell me. That means that it's never God who spoke. Man. You have to understand to be led Man. is not you heard a voice. Right. Can I get a hair tie, please? Man. Give me a hair tie. And can we fix those two mics, please? They are not positioned correctly uh, for the audience, please. 
Let me, let me get a hair tie before I go, I go deep. I want to make sure that um, the, the mic is not, um, is not being tapped with the, oh, did I take the wrong thing? Where is it? Okay, there we go. Okay. Power. Okay. That's better. Right? Okay. I, I watch you and your daughter, and I see your wife with your daughter. You don't tell Nuri where you're going. You just take her. You have set times for her to eat. Mm -hmm. You have set times for her to sleep. You lead her to bed. Mm -hmm. It's time to sleep now. <laughs> I don't want to sleep. She fights it, but then she falls asleep. Right. And then she thanks you because you know like she's tired, but she doesn't want to admit that she's tired. She's restless. She's this and this. But you already know that what she needs is sleep. Mm -hmm. And she's fighting sleep. Yeah. So you lead her, you take her to bed, you dim the lights, and you do whatever, and then she passes out. In the morning, you know if she oversleeps, then she will stay long up at night. So you have to wake her up at a certain time. Right. You know exactly when for her to have a nap and when not to have a nap. She's still being led. Yeah. She's still being led. She's not qualified. She can't even understand when you speak. She's just repeating what you say. Right. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> just repeating. <laughs> Say dada, dada. Right. Wow, wow. She's excited, but she doesn't know anything. She doesn't get, she understands now. Okay, this is for dad. Mm -hmm. This is for mom. This is for uncle. This is for auntie. But she's still not fully comprehending. And sometimes, you know, it's so funny when, when, we are, when you're with her and she tries to have a conversation, it's all gibberish. And then the last word is the only real word. <laughs> Beach. You're right. Yeah, beach. Yeah, yeah, we're going to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> she's still in the realm of imitating, not understanding, yes. because she's being led. That's so good. When you're a spiritual infant, mm -hmm. you're still in the realm of instruction. Yeah. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading the Bible and Philip saw him and Philip joined him on, on the chariot. And um, he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, I don't know. Then he started to teach him and the guy said, well, there's water right here. Why, is it, why can't I just be baptized right now? Yeah. Notice he had the whole time reading but he never comprehended anything even though his heart was in the right place. And we know by the Spirit of God for you to be interested of the things of God, it is God himself that has to direct you in that way. Man. You did not choose me, I chose you. You did not call me, I called you. Yes. Man. My brother uh, Daniel Adams, I can't wait to see you this in the next few days. So, so, so capture this by the Spirit of God. Please understand this. So we have spiritual infants that are 50 years old, 60 years old. 40 years old, 20 year old, 25 year old. So true. Because of their, 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 their age, mm -hmm. they think that qualifies them for spiritual maturity. But as a servant of God that is seasoned spiritually, mm -hmm. I may not be seasoned in age, right. but seasoned spiritually. What I look at is, are you still in the realm of being led? Right. Right. If you're still in the realm of being led, it doesn't mean you would not say correct things because you are just regurg regurgitating what you have heard. Right. Not because you understand it. Exactly. Not because you know it. Not because you have had an experience, but you are repeating what you have read, what you have seen. Not with revelation knowledge. Is this making sense? Yes. The sad part is there's many people who are in this realm and they're leading churches. They are leading ministries. Telling people that God said. And God never said. <laughs> Because if God speaks to you, he will start by speaking about your life. Man. 
hand. You see, when God took the children of Israel into Egypt, the children of Israel did not know why they went into Egypt. They thought it was just to save their life. But Joseph, who was preparing for them to come to Egypt, told them, when we leave this country, take my bones. He knew there would be slaves there. He understood what was going to happen to them. And he understood that by the time they leave this place, he would have been dead and it will be his bones that they will take back. They were just led into Egypt to survive. But they were not mature enough to be at the place of understanding. When God is leading you, you don't even know what question to ask. Big Sham, take this chair in front here. Where's your husband? Huh? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So so when, when, when you're at this stage, it is the stage of ecstasy. It's just the stage of I'm being led, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, just you will speak about God, but you have no depth with God. The next stage after the stage of being led is the stage of being instructed. Now God is no longer just carrying you through things. God is now beginning to speak, giving you instruction. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is people who are still in the being led dimension, Mm -hmm. they want to be in the instruction dimension, but yet they don't have the capacity to enter the instruction dimension. Because before God promotes you, you have to understand that it is not about you. God does not promote you because you have been good. God promotes you because you have seen the true nature of who you are. And your dependence on God has increased. Mm. Now you are ready to mature. Now God will move you to the next stage. That is why you see the prodigal son is promoted. Mm -hmm. The son in the house is not promoted. Mm. God promotes you when you are broken. God promotes you when you are robbed of all your strength and he becomes your strength. God promotes you when you realize that your life means nothing without him. God promotes you when you realize that all your goodness is simply filthy, filthy, filthy rags. Yeah. So you no longer live for works. Mm -hmm. You live to do works of the Spirit. And what are works of the Spirit? Believing on the one he sent. So many want to qualify themselves by what they do. Mm -hmm. That is why God cannot instruct them. Because they will interfere with God's instruction. (laughs) If God said go left... They will create their own formula why they should go right. right. So you still think you know. So God has to let you use all your knowledge, all your understanding. When you're dry, now you're ready to be instructed. Oh, that's good. That's good. When you're instructed, this is now the realm whereby God begins to build spiritual character. Mm -hmm. Because when you're given an instruction, you need obedience, not delayed obedience. Because delayed obedience is still disobedience. This is the realm that God now starts to build obedience Mm -hmm. and he begins to build the ability to die to self. 
Because when God begins to instruct you, he expects you to fail in certain areas. He does. 100% expects you to fail. Wow. He knows that you won't be perfect. Wow. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us. Which of the apostles did everything perfectly? None. So God knows which of the prophets did everything right. Yeah. None. Only Jesus is perfect. Mm -hmm. So God understands even through your failures, that is where you mature. That's why the Bible says all things work for our good. Yeah. For those who what, love yeah. him and are called oh. according to what? His purpose. His purpose. So in the realm of instruction is when God will tell you, give this seed. Why should I give this seed? It doesn't make sense. God, why are you telling me to do, to do this? He won't tell you why. Wow. Do this. Because God will help you to understand that after you give, you will see the results and say, ah, now I know why I should give. Mm. You see, God gives you instruction because from that instruction you mature. Right. Because God wants you to grow by experience. Right. Not just by head knowledge. You need to experience. Right. Uh, fast for three days. Ah. Fast for three days, why? Fast for three days. Okay, Father, I'm here in your presence. I'm fasting, Lord. Help me to grow. Help me to understand. Notice, God is putting you through this process to break your soul. This is now the most critical stage because most spend a necessary amount of years in this place. It is at this stage that it's very critical mm -hmm. because this is where God now begins to unveil who you really are. But because self-righteousness creeps in when you are being led, because when God is led, leading you, he's not breaking you yet. Yeah. It is in the place of instruction that God's begin, God begins to break you. This is the time that people will offend you mm -hmm. and you have every reason not to forgive them. And God will say, forgive them. Go and love on them. And you go and do that thinking they won't do it again. Tomorrow they do it worse. You say, God, what's good? I thought they would have changed. It's not about people changing. It's about doing what I want you to do. Right. And to have my heart to do it the way I want you to do it. So there are people who are still fighting flesh. Yeah. Because when you enter in the realm of instruction, it is also the place that you start now encountering spiritual warfare. Wow. Oh, man. This is the place you begin to understand the difference between wrestling with spirits mm -hmm. and wrestling with flesh and blood. Yeah. This is where you begin to understand, okay, am I fighting flesh and blood or am I fighting spirits? Mm -hmm. Now you look at this statement that just, I, I just said. Ask yourself how many pastors are fighting pastors. It tells you where they are. How many believers are fighting against believers? Right. It tells you exactly where they are. Right. How many brothers are fighting against brothers? Right. Yet he's telling you, love your neighbors, you love yourself. Mm. What does that mean? You know you make mistakes and you still have never given up on you. Yeah. Are you doing the same for your neighbor? Yeah. He didn't say love your neighbor above yourself. <laughs> love your neighbor the way you love yourself. So you know the truth about yourself. Right. So you should see that truth with others and you are able to love them. 
If you see your neighbor the way you see you, mm. it's easy to love them. Yeah. But if you have false expectations, mm. <laughs> they should be like this, they should be like this, you have forgotten the truth about you. Right. So this place is a dangerous place. That's good. This is where you start fighting your friends. I feel like this is also the place where a lot of Christians just get stuck. Big time. And they don't even, it's almost like they die in this place as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because there are certain things that God will ask you also to let go of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you are going deep. That, that, they, that you cannot take when God is actually taking you up the mountain. It's, mm-hmm. it's, I'm thinking of Abraham and his son. Mm-hmm. When God instructed Abraham, or when Abraham was getting ready to go up the mountain, he instructed mm-hmm. his servants, his two servants, to stay there mm-hmm. with the donkeys. Mm-hmm. You cannot be around people with a donkey mindset when God is starting to incline you. You're evil. <laughs> it's just going people don't it, Listen. You're deep, I agree with you. Keep going. Because, because <laughs> as you're going up, the air is thinner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And not everybody can breathe at the level that God is trying to take you. Yeah, yeah. Your jobs can't breathe at the level that God is about to take you. Yeah. Your current salary cannot breathe at the level that God is trying to take you. Like, when your vision is so big, you have to be completely dependent on God yeah. because now you know, if it's not you that's on my side, how can I get this done? Yeah. And we get stuck because... We stay in a relationship Mm. thinking that God is going to take that person with us. Mm -hmm. We stay in these environments Mm. thinking that it's part of the plan. Yeah. Yeah. God is like, I need you to sacrifice. You see, this is another trick of the enemy in this this place. You see, when people are being led, Mm. God will put you around the correct circles in the beginning. Yeah. But as you mature, he will start unveiling the people that are with you. Now, the issue is, many when they are still in the realm of being led and they get into the realm of being instructed, they begin to make decisions for God. I'm going to cut that person off. I'm going to cut this person off. I'm going to cut that person off. I'm going to cut that person off because they are doing this. But what you're forgetting is this. Every time the children of Israel got help from other nations, it wasn't Christians. I personally don't even like doing business with Christians. Can I be real? I'm, I'm being honest. Very few believers won't bring. <laughs> Let me just drop it there because. It's... <laughs> no, no, many times I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. Because it ends up being some nonsense political thing that mm-hmm. it shouldn't be. It's straightforward, but it won't be straightforward because they always bring their personal things into things. Right. Right. I was doing my birthday pictures with, with my son, J.D., and I went up to his studio, a beautiful studio in Orange County, and, I, and Eva was with me, and I, and I took pictures, and he was like, oh, and I was like, okay, can you send me how much it will be? He was like, no, Pops, it's your birthday. Mm-hmm. I told him, don't ever do that. Yeah, don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. I'm just, I'm just giving, I said, no, 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 don't ever do that. Look at me, do I look like I'm struggling to pay? Right. And if I come and I do this, whereby you're paying this rent, you're doing right. all these things. Exactly. I just robbed you mm-hmm. when I can afford it. Mm. I'm not saying you can't do nice things for me, but this is your place of work. If I don't honor your place of work, then I don't honor your work. Right. How will I expect others to come and pay you mm-hmm. when me who can afford it, I'm not paying it? That's mm. wrong. Yeah. It's funny you said that because I was at the barbershop the other day. Yes. 
<laughs> and we started talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. We had a great e e exchange. And when I got up to pay, he said, I want to give you a discount. I'm like, no, I will pay what you have and put a tip on it as well. Yeah. And man, that is so, because Christians will prostitute your gift. Yeah. yeah. They will, they will, they want to pray before the contract. And I'm like, no, let me see that number first. It's true. L l l let me tell you something. Most of the issues I have had with men of God mm. is because they wanted to prostitute my gift and I would never let that happen. Damn. That's really the reason. Most of them wanted to learn how I do what I do. Mm. Wanted to become buddy buddy because of what I do. Right. And I don't do buddy buddy things like that. Mm. Would you teach me? Would you teach the, my people? Would you teach this person? Would you do that? And I pulled myself back because I know the hearts of men. Right. I know that they are not wanting to be with me because of brotherhood. Right. They want to be with me because if they get what they want from me, they will never, ever, ever, and it's evident. Yeah. You see them by their action. The issue is it is in this place that people start abandoning God. They start creating their own strategies mm. instead of being instructed. Right. I don't know how many times I've seen pastors come and they'll be like, um, ah, you know, my church is, how did you build? No, you didn't come so that you can be brothers in exactly. Christ. You didn't come because of prayer. You didn't come because of anything like that. All you want is for your church to grow. Then tomorrow, right. you're going to be a different person. Exactly. Now, when people fail in instructions in this realm, mm. obviously God doesn't spit you out. But they don't go back to God and say, Ah, God, I messed up. Give me the strength to do it right. When they fail, they start creating their own solutions. So it prolongs the time. Mm. Man. That people remain in this place. It prolongs the time unnecessarily. Mm. And they God. develop a form of godliness. Uh huh. Without like the power. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Lord, you know, the Lord has been moving. How has He been moving? Well, you know, he's just been faithful. How has he been faithful? Right. We are still standing. <laughs> still here. He, he's still here. That's not, that's not thriving. <laughs> so God just called you to suffer. Where's the victory? But you see, it is where people now remain in a dry place. Mm. This is the realm that God also puts you under leadership so that you can learn how to be a servant. Amen. Because you can't lead without being a servant. So God will instruct you spiritually, but he will also instruct you by those people that are there. Yeah. Your leader, your pastor, your, your prophet, your apostle, he will put them in that place. Mm. That's good. To be a consistent test to reveal to you where you are. Uh, would you arrange the chairs today? Man, with all the anointing I have. <laughs> Why should I arrange chairs? Can they say the, the oil oozing out of me? <laughs> How can they, with all this oil anointing, mm, I am more, I, listen, I, 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 I am a, don't they know who I, God has called me to be? Notice, pride enters. Mm. Do they know how many visions I have? Right. Arrange chairs. Mm. Man. Now, you know, God just said my time in that church is over. God is calling me to a higher place. Ah. Mm. God is calling me to a greater place, you know. Then they go to another church. That yeah. church is the best church. They even testify. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's so good. One week later, oh, God. God said I, this was my season. <laughs> they don't realize they start becoming church hoppers. Today they are here, tomorrow they are there, next week they are here, the other week they are, they are just bouncing around. Bang, 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 bang. No stability. 
Why? Because they despised the instruction. Man. You need to be under instruction in order for you to enter into the realm of power. You need un- to be under authority. Hear me, please hear me and hear me clearly. You need to be under authority mm-hmm. in order for you to enter in the realm of power. Why? Hmm. That's good. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Mm-hmm. Go into Jerusalem and tarry until the promise of the Father has come. Now, believers, think when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, immediately you become powerful. Mm. No, 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 no. The disciples received power because they were under instruction. Mm. They served. They were under instruction. Mm -hmm. He commissioned them, go and wait in prayer Mm. until the promise comes. Mm. When you receive power, then you will be my witnesses. Mm. Notice, they were already casting out demons, but Jesus said, you are not ready. Yeah. They were already helping him pray for people. He said, you are not ready. Mm. But when the promise of the Father comes on you, you see, people confuse the, the, the spirit of God within and the spirit of God upon. Yeah. With the spirit of God within, you can cast out demons. Mm -hmm. Because anyone that bears the seal of the Lord Jesus, every demon is under your feet anyway. Mm -hmm. But the spirit of God upon is a completely different uh, dimension. Because you have to understand, power is delegated. Mm. Power is not picked up. Authority is not picked up. You see, we have this school of, yeah, pick up your authority. Pick up your power. Ah, there's no such thing. Power is delegated. Mm. Jesus looked at a man who was not a Christian. Mm -hmm. But the way the man answered Jesus, Jesus actually said, I have not seen such faith in all of Israel. And this wasn't from a Christian. This wasn't from a believer. It was from a man who is under authority. Right. You see, there are other dimensions of God you will never know until you serve a man. Right. (laughs) That's true. He said, Lord, why do you need to come? You don't need to come. Just send your word. Mm. For I myself, I am a man under authority, not I myself, I'm a man of authority. Right. I myself am a man under authority. Mm. Most of the men of God you see today, yeah. you can't tell who their authority is. Mm-mm. Their authority is people they agree with. Right. Mm. <laughs> Not people who push them to draw close to God. The moment somebody begins to push them to get close to God, they say, that's not what God told me, this is what God, they switch up immediately. And some people don't even have authority and power themselves, but they want to be powerful. Right. So they want to lead others. Yet right. you yourself, you're empty. Right. I don't care how old you are. Because power is delegated. Mm. If you look through scripture, all the men and women who walked in power, they were given power. Yeah. It didn't just fall from the sky. Right. No, 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 no. People say, ah, well, Paul, no, 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 no. Paul was instructed by Ananias. So this realm is very critical because if you don't pay attention, you can spend your whole life in this area. And I've seen it so many, 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 many times. People remain in this place. People get stuck in this place. This is a very scary place because most of you, if you feel like you're stuck spiritually, you're most likely in this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
because this is where the testing is, this is where the tempting is, it's yeah. in this area. You can even go back to that place. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, 100%, you can fall back, you can demote yourself. This is the area whereby God tells you to open a church and money starts drying up. Ah. <laughs> God wants to see if you'll be faithful. Are you doing this for money or are you doing it for me? For recognition or for me? Everything I'm telling you, I myself went through. Mm. And some I'm still going through. Yeah. Because it's a continual process. But by God's grace, God promoted me to the other side. Mark 16, 17. Uh -huh. Mark 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Mm -hmm. They shall speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, mm -hmm. it shall not hurt them. Mm -hmm. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mm -hmm. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Notice, they've skipped the part of uh, baptism of the Spirit. But it's saying, after the Lord said this, the Lord went with them and confirmed the words by the signs that followed them. This now is the realm whereby you are seasoned in the spirit. In this realm now, God doesn't have to say something in order for something to happen. You can say something and God will back it up as if it's his own word. In this realm now, you are working together with God. The Bible says no word of Samuel ever fell to the ground. He didn't say the word of God to Samuel because God's word cannot fall on the ground. So this doesn't make sense. It says no word of Samuel ever fell to the ground. He didn't say the word of God because the word of God is never void. The word of God always accomplishes what he was sent out to do. But the word of man has no backing. The word of man has no backing unless a spirit is going to make that word happen. An example, when the devil speaks, he has to use his demons to carry out that word mm. because his word has no power. Yeah. But when God speaks, the word of God is life itself. Mm. But the words of man carry no weight whatsoever. The words of man carry no weight whatsoever. But then you see certain men that began to behave like they were God. Elisha is traveling back and forth. A certain woman says, uh, man, this prophet is traveling by this place. No one is doing this. She built a room for him. That every time he traveled, he could take rest in that place. That was his resting place. One day the prophet looked at his servant and he said, man, this woman has been so good and kind to me. What can I do for her? The servant said, Lord, she, she doesn't look like she has kids. He said, oh, that's fine. I will give her a son. Uh, God saw this woman for all these years. God didn't give her a child. God didn't see fit to give her a child. God did not see fit to give her a child. But when he said, oh, I will give her a son... And he's saying, he's even picking the gender. 
He's deciding it. God didn't decide. He's the one who is speaking. Uh, you know what? I will give her a son. The woman becomes pregnant and she gives birth to a boy. You see the same thing with the, uh, 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 Samuel's mother. The Bible says, and the Lord shut her womb. Mm. Her husband began to say, man, you're bugging me about this baby, baby, baby thing. Am I not enough more than babies? Right. The woman prayed, cried to God, did everything she could. She goes to the temple, weeping and crying. God is not answering. Samuel, who is rejected by God, <laughs> passes by and he sees this woman crying. He goes to her, how dare you come to the temple drunk? She says, I'm, I'm not drinking. I'm just crying because of my pain. The, pro the, the, the high priest and the prophet realizes he made a mistake. He says, oh, don't worry, go. Your prayer has been answered. <laughs> In his accident of speaking, mm. because of his position, the woman goes home and she's pregnant. <laughs> uh, you're not hearing me tonight. <laughs> It's crazy. I, I, I don't know if you can hear me. This is crazy. So there is a place now, you have to understand that when the Bible says in Mark 16, 17, in my name, people think when I mention the name of Jesus, then I'm able to do these things. That is not what the scripture is saying. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they will do this. Mm. But people now, you want now, uh, now, let's, let's examine this. Mark 16, 17 says this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. They will drink deadly things and nothing will happen to them. How many Christians say in Jesus' name and nothing happens? Right. Either the Bible is wrong mm. or you have misunderstood the scripture. Right. And the truth is you have misunderstood the scripture because yeah. the Bible is never wrong. Right. Yeah. When you speak in tongues, do you say in the name of Jesus, then you start speaking in tongues? Mm. Because it says, in my name they shall speak in new tongues. Right. Do you say, in the mighty name of Jesus, Rabba Shada Baba. <laughs> it doesn't come to you like that. You'll be in deep prayer and then you just change dimensions, you enter into tongues. Nobody says, now Father, I am about to pray in tongues. In Jesus' name, tongues become. It doesn't work like that. That's good. The word in my name, the word name there means anoma. Mm. Anoma doesn't mean in the name of. Anoma means in the manner and the character of. Right. Meaning in the same way Jesus would do it, I am doing it. Mm. It's not saying at the mention of my name, they will cast out demons. Mm. It says in my name. Yeah. An example is back in the day, when uh, 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 a long time ago when in, the, in the kingdom era, when they would come and knock the door, boom, 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 open in the name of the king. Mm -hmm. What they're trying to tell you is that we are knocking your door and you're supposed to open because we are sent by the authority right. of the king. Right. So we are knocking because it is like the king has come himself. Exactly. So somebody needs to understand the language here. Yeah. Mm. Open in the name of the king. They're not saying, uh, uh, let, me, let me pick, uh, uh, what, what was the king of England now? Ch Charles. Charles, the king, open. You don't do that. You say, in the name of the king. Mm -hmm. Who is the king? King Charles, who you are in his territory, open this door. Notice it is the authority and the manner that they are doing it. Right. It is not merely in the mentioning of the name. 
Right. People curse and they use the name of Jesus. People lie in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what it's saying is in the manner, in the character. Now you have to remember, Jesus' character was not just physically. It, it, Jesus' character was not physical mm-hmm. only. It was mostly spiritual. Mm-hmm. It was just manifested physically. Right. So now... This is the place that you have now been conformed to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. That you no longer just say the name. You have become the embodiment of that name. Peter's shadow could heal the sick, not because Peter said, in the name of Jesus, my shadow healed people. That shadow carried the identity of Jesus. That when you came in contact with that shadow, that shadow carried the presence, the zeal, the power, the unction of the Lord Jesus, that his shadow was enough to heal you. This is now where we call you spiritually mature. We can come to you and ask you to pray for us because we know God may deny me, but he won't deny you. Right. The problem is we have equalized everybody, uh, just pray for me and things will be okay. No, there are people who pray for you and God won't respond. He may respond with other things, but there are certain things you may not respond. Yeah. It doesn't matter how, many, how much faith you have. There are certain things God will do based on the merit of the grace he has put on somebody. Yeah, that's good. Not because of how much or how well people pray. I know some of the best praying people that have no results in their life. This is where now people begin to see the experience of God with man. When your words begin to be validated by the king himself. That when you sneeze, he says, bless you, you become rich. Mm. I didn't say bless you, I, I refused. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is the place whereby whatever you say, God doesn't allow your words to fall because he has to prove that he sent you. Thank you, God. Because if your words fail, you see, I'll give you an example with the prophetic. I'll give you an example with the prophetic. There are prophets who are in the level where the Holy Spirit has to say something which is not wrong, it's okay. If the Holy Spirit did not say something, they have no words to say. Then there is a level you get to where what you say, the Holy Spirit backs up, Mm. not because he said it, but because you are his. He trusts you to represent him. Mm. That's good. Peter looks at Ananias and says, "Uh, did you sell this land for this much? Oh, yes, I sure did. He said, are you sure? Oh, absolutely. You know, the Lord moved upon my heart. And we are giving it all. He said, why did you allow Satan to lie to you? You thought you were talking to me. Didn't you know you are talking to the Holy Spirit? Do you realize no one has ever made that statement? Tell me one person in the Gospels that said that. So what is Peter talking about? You thought you were lying to me, you are lying to the Holy Spirit. Peter, have you become the Holy Spirit? What is going on here? No one has ever made that statement ever. But you see a similar thing with Elisha. His servant comes back, he says, "Uh, is this the time to collect bribe? Is this the time to buy vineyards for yourself?
Because you have done this. Because you have done this. The sickness that was on that man, that leprosy is coming on you. You become white as snow. And for four generations, ah, my guy, this, he just took bribe. <laughs> At least punish him. Why are you just, why are you putting his kids into this? But he beca- the Bible says he became sick immediately. Instantly, his skin became white as snow. God had to punish because his prophet has spoken. Now, I personally think Elisha had anger issues. <laughs> I just think he had anger issues. Uh, Elisha was not a good guy. <laughs> you crossed him. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're calling me bald head? <laughs> Bears show up, they tear you apart. <laughs> Elisha was that guy. Elisha was just... Elisha had anger issues. <laughs> but notice God is still backing his words because in the loophole, in the loophole of things, he's still on the right. Mm. But even Jesus would not do that. Jesus would not do what Elisha did. But because he's still in the borders of being right, right. God has to back him up. Please hear me by the Spirit of God. Don't desire to be used by God. Remove that out of your mind. Don't desire to be used by God. When you are used, it is because you are profitable for a moment. That is why you don't like people who use you. Because they just took advantage of your posture at that time and what you could do for them at that time. There are people that God used in the scriptures and he only used them one time and never used them again. Mm. But there are people in scripture that God walked with them Mm -hmm. and God never left them. I will hold you by my right hand. That is the level you want to grow with right. God. That God is the one holding you by his right hand. You are walking, you're not being used. Right. But you are walking and working with God. Yeah. The high priest, Caiaphas, or if that's how you say his name, they were gathered together discussing how they were going to kill Jesus. And Caiaphas says, ah, they are saying, ah, we should kill him, ah, we shouldn't kill him. They're all arguing and things of that sort. And Caiaphas says, you fools, don't you know it is good for one man to die instead of the whole nation to perish? The next verse says, he spoke these things. He pro- Actually, it says, he prophesied these things. Being high priest that year, Notice he was prophesying, he didn't even know God was speaking. God used him to speak those words to fulfill something, yet he was guilty in the sight of God. And after that, you never hear any prophecy from him again. From the day he was high priest, there was no prophecy. It was that day that he prophesied. But he prophesied being on the wrong. He wasn't even right, but God still spoke because what they were doing was the the divine plan of God. They were set up by God and they didn't know. Because the only way God is going to receive a sacrifice for the nation, the high priest has to offer him. So God put words in the high priest to represent Jesus as a what? Offering instead of the whole nation. Wow. To perish. And remember, the nation here is not just talking about Israel. Yeah. Even though in his mind he may have thought he was speaking about Israel. But the nation he was speaking about was the seed that will come out of Jesus. Thank you, God. Don't desire to be used. 
desire to walk with God. If you desire to walk with God, then you will also build yourself up to be in that posture whereby God can reason with you. God can reason with you. The Lord had given me two places that we need to do Revelation nights at for this coming year. Two places. Two places. And I know uh, um, and I know that we are planning to do one. And I had to reason with God and say, okay, Lord, first of all, which one do we do first? And is it possible for us to just do one? I'm still waiting for an answer. He will answer me for sure, 100%, because it's his will. But I can reason with God and say, ah, Lord, this logistically, I know you can make anything happen, but the last time we suffered a little bit because of doing double. This, past, this year we did Houston and we did London. Both were greatly successful. There's a place you get to, you can reason with God, you can walk with God, and you can work with God. Do everything you can to desire that maturity. Yeah. That's why you see so-called prophets, they only prophesied one thing. After that period ended, prophecies are normal. You see, when COVID came, there were a lot of people prophesying. <laughs> Where are they now? Right. Crickets. When election comes, the prophetic anointing comes back again. <laughs> God wants to walk with you. That is the desire of God. That is where God is fulfilled, yeah. when he can walk and work with us. Yeah. I want you to take a moment and, and I want you to really think about this and let this sink into your heart. This is why we must be obedient to God. When we're in the realm of instruction, let us become obedient because we spend so much time in this place unnecessarily. Yeah. We spend too much time in this place unnecessarily. Yeah. So I pray you, in the name of Jesus, let your prayer be centered on Lord, like Samuel, back my words. Yeah. Let me mature to the place whereby, Lord, I am not just speaking for you, but you're speaking through me and you're walking with me, and you are there with me, even when I don't get it right, you can make it right. Thank you, God. When this desire becomes genuine in your heart, then you are ready to elevate to where God wants you to be.